My name is Butterscotch. I'm a singer, beatboxer, first female beatbox world champion, and you may have seen me on America's Got Talent. And today we're gonna break down 13 levels of complexity in beatboxing. Beatboxing is the art of vocal percussion, so every sound you make is only using your mouth. It's one of the most unique things that you can do because everyone is different. So we're all gonna have some sort of different style that we add. So remember, this is my version of what makes beatboxing complex. Level one, bass drum. So we're gonna start with the simplest sound, which is the bass drum. And this is the heartbeat. It sets the tempo and the tone for whatever beat you're gonna do. So the perfect way to get this sound is to really accentuate your lips and the air pushing through. And so what you're really doing is forcing the air out of your mouth. It's gonna take time to build up that muscle in your lips, but once you get the strength, then it's gonna be a clean, hard So we have the bass drum, but now we need another percussive element to help drive that beat. Level two, snare. So we're gonna take the bass drum and add a snare to it. This is what actually makes the beat. It's not just a heartbeat. The easiest and quickest way to beatbox is just to say boots and cats together. Boots. Cats. Saying these two boots. words together are prepping your cats. mouth for the right form to boots. beatbox boots. with the right cats. sounds. So when you say these boots. two words together, cats. you're creating a very simple boots. rhythm that people cats. can play over boots. or rap cats. over or boots. jam over. Cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats, boots, cats. Level three, hi-hat. So we got the bass, we've got the snare, and now we're adding the hi-hat. And this is completing the elements of the basic sounds of a drum kit. Everything else in beatboxing, they're just embellishments. And if you want to see the core elements, here's a drum kit. You've got your bass, you've got your snare, and you've got your hi-hat. With the hi-hat, you really want to make these sounds tight. And this is what makes the rhythm move. It pushes it. And it sounds almost like a sprinkler, too. You don't want it to be too loose, cause then you're gonna, you're gonna lose that technical sound that you want. That's just not gonna hit it. You just gotta make it clean. Hi-hats can be closed, or they can also be open. So now that we have our core sounds, let's introduce a basic beat. So beats can be anything, but this is the simplest, most basic hip hop beat. So I'm taking the bass, I'm taking the snare, and I'm taking the hi-hat, and I'm gonna put them in this order. So I can throw in another bass drum, which makes the rhythm and the pattern sound a little bit more exciting. It's one thing to just make those sounds, but over time as you practice and your lips get stronger, you're gonna sound like this. So this is super simple. It's basically the Mary Had a Little Lamb of hip hop beats. If you listen back to Lottie Dottie, Dougie Fresh, the original human beatbox, this is the beat that's behind it. Yo, beep this, Lottie Dottie, we like to party, we don't cause trouble, don't bother nobody. So this whole time, the snare I've been using, it can become kind of monotonous if you're just always using the same type of snare, even just within a song. So what happens when I change it up and make things a little bit more complex? I can interchange the snare with a bunch of other different sounds, and that's what makes it more dynamic. I can do p sounds. So combining the p, f, sh, s, you can mix them all up and come up with all different kinds of snares. The p sounds are more like hitting the snare or a drum machine, whereas the sound is like a rim shot. You don't want to use all the sounds all at once. It'd be like having a drummer just play every single drum and it's not really making a beat, it's just sound. So when you first start beatboxing, you're pretty much gonna have to plan out your breaths. Most of the snares that I'm using, I'm breathing outward. So this is what it looks like when all the sounds that I'm using are breathing out. I run out of breath because there's no time to even catch my breath. Whereas if I'm breathing inward, I can go faster, I can breathe while I'm actually beatboxing. 
I can just interlace my breathing with the beat itself. After a while, then it just becomes second nature and you can just breathe within the beat. So when you're a drummer, sometimes you make two sounds at once. I only have one mouth. So this level of complexity is taking two of the core elements of the drum kit and putting them together. So here's my bass and here's my hi-hat and I'm just gonna combine them. So this is me doing it normal and this is me adding the bass and hi-hat together. You can add multiple sounds at the same time, but we're gonna save that for a couple levels later. Everything we've been doing up to now has been percussive, but now level seven, adding a bass line. I don't have the vocal range to go super low, but what I can do is vibrate my lips and get this certain frequency that creates this tone and this pitch. So with this lip bass, I'm basically just vibrating my lips, but this is getting a tighter form and you're actually making pitches and tones. So I'm gonna take this bass sound and add it to the beat. This is the limit of what I can do with the bass sound since I don't have the vocal cords that stretch that low, but with other beatboxers like Inertia, they can go super, super low that create this like subwoofer bass. <laughs> All levels up to now have been using my mouth, but now we're gonna add another level of complexity by using my throat. Level eight, humming. Humming and beatboxing is one of the most difficult things because you're using different parts of your mouth and your throat and your lips all at the same time. So you wanna get that humming sound more kind of nasally and then throw the beat on top of that. So when you're first starting out, just hum and then make the bass drum noise at the same time. The hardest thing is adding the snare on top of that. Cause a lot of people will wanna go but that doesn't really sound that great. If you go and then that's a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna take that bass sound and add another note on top of it, which gives it a richer sound. One of my favorite beatboxers is the current world female beatbox champion, Kayla Milady, and she adds these musical elements to make her beatboxing stand out. So far, everything we've done has been instrumental. So let's add some lyrics. The easiest way to begin is to start with B words because you're already saying B with the bass drum. So you can say banana. Banana. Or you can say beat box. Beat box. Beat box. You can also use it with P, because that's the same shape that your mouth is already making for those sounds. Pop tart. Pop tart. Pop tart. Pop tart. So with other consonants, it's a little bit harder. Crunchy taco. Crunchy taco. There is a split second, like say if I'm saying zebra, I'm just saying a split hair after I do the bass drum. So it's zebra, zebra, zebra. But if I'm doing it so fast, it sounds like I'm doing it at the same time. Zebra, zebra, zebra. Or if you have a g sound, which sounds almost impossible to do a b and a g sound at the same time. But once you've been doing it a long time, pretty much any word is possible. Gorilla. Gorilla. So the most exciting moment in beatbox history for me is when Razel beatbox and sang at the same time. He sang if, if. You wouldn't normally think a bass drum and if would go at the same time. If your mother, mother at the same time. That's, that's crazy too. If your mother only knew. Before that, people had rapped and beatbox, maybe did a little singing and beatbox, but it wasn't 
as cohesive and clean, and it blew people's minds. That's one of the reasons I'm beatboxing today. There's a form that's kind of taking off as well that Kid Lucky started and amazing beatboxers like Kayla Milady are doing it. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere that you ain't by my side. So now we're going to get more complex by adding different sound effects. This is where you find your style and what really makes you stand out. So these are different sounds that I've been developing over the years. I have the lip bass, tongue bass, growl bass, slizzard roll, trumpet, scratching. Oh yeah. When I was younger, I used to bark like a dog. I would do that in class and scare people. You don't have to be good at all these different sounds to be a good beatboxer. Just find the sounds that you love and that represent you, and that's your style. I would say my trumpet is one of my most unique and signature sounds. It brings out what makes my music me. I'm inspired by people like Miles Davis or Dizzy Gillespie. I love jazz and that's what I grew up with. I love classical music, so I'm trying to get better at making a nice violin sound. Emulating real instruments are probably the hardest because this is what people are most familiar with. When you're trying to make the same sound, you gotta have it pretty spot on. Before we move on to level 11, here's the first 10 levels all together. Beatbox. For this next level, we're gonna go just back to the beat. But this time, it's all about new school. Level 11, intricate beats. So I'm starting with a drum and bass beat. You can hear all the things that I'm doing, which sounds simple, but as I go faster, it sounds a bit more complex. This level is more complex because your brain has to catch up with what your mouth is doing, or your mouth has to catch up with what your brain is trying to do. But everything starts with a very simple beginning, and you can just like work it up and go as fast as you can. You can take it to the exponential level with how fast you can go, with how many sounds you can do within a certain beat. It's incredibly technical. So complexity isn't just about going for speed. For me, it's about being multidimensional. For level 12, I'm doing a classic song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and I'm singing, beatboxing, and playing the guitar at the same time. So it's complex because my brain is having to operate at a different level trying to do the beat and play and sing. Swing low, sweet chariot. So I added trumpet at the beginning to give it kind of a jazzy flair that just sets up the song in a nice way. So it could be other instruments, but I love playing guitar. I love taking classics and just flipping them and making them sound more new. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. In this last performance, I'm gonna be live looping, which is overdubbing all the instruments that you see. I have my keyboard, my guitar, my loop station, beatbox, vocals, different sound effects, and the classic trumpet sound. So I sing beatbox or play into the loop station, and it creates different layers that overdub. It's complex because I'm combining so many different elements, different instruments. There's no room for error because every sound has to be on the beat because it's looped.
Beatboxing because it's completely unique. You're able to do so much just with your own body. There's all sorts of levels and intricacies of what makes beatboxing multidimensional. It's portable, it's fun, and it's pretty damn special. So I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks, Wired. Swing low. <laughs>